catalog. There it is. This is new glossy and 290 lots of unfettered joy. Fully researched, catalogued. And there it all is. So starting off here, I'm gonna give a quick spin around the room just to show you what we're looking at. There it all is, all the models laid out. Paintings down the side. Cabinets of Curiosities here. And back to the cabinets here. And on top we've got the launching casket or remains of it for the um, Super Dreadnought Indefatigable launched in 1909. Sadly blown up at Jutland for the loss of over a thousand men in 1916. Fatally flawed with tooth and decks. Here we have a French Napoleonic prisoner of war bone model made out of beef bone, 200 years old and looking pretty good, I have to say. Around the corner, we've got these funny little characters. They're Dunlop advertising figures recovered from the wreck of the Medina, a P&O liner torpedoed in the Great War. They're rather fun though. Um, freedom casket for Admiral Charles Beresford. There he is and all his pomp and glory. That is capital, his flagship, HMS King Edward VII. And that's his famous action uh, the Condor bombarding the forts at Alexandria um, with a signal well done Condor flying from the flagship. Uh, another tip, more typical launching casket for the Odin, uh, 1902 Sheerness, last, last Royal Naval ships um, ever given a ring. Uh, these are Sweetheart Valentines, sailors shell work Valentines, sailors bought them rather than made them and gave them to their, their sweethearts and it's very unusual to find one with the, um, the sailor um, portrayed in watercolours opposite his uh, sweetheart. There she is. A little silver salver here um, was given to, in 1744 to the chap who built HMS Captain, um, launched in Chatham um, and went off to fight in the American War of Independence. But a rare thing. And just down here, a little shelf of bone and ivory models made by French and uh, uh, model makers. Uh, clock set here from HMS Exeter, that was the Battle of the River Plate, great film, go and see it. And um, uh, she was sunk in 1942 at the Battle of the Java Sea, but not before being refitted, and that's when this clock came off, for being a bit old fashioned. Uh, over here we have uh, a lighthouse clock, glow, lots of chronometers again, Some that's a chest of microscope slides, there we are, lots of chronometers. Uh, these are Japanese bridge binoculars from the Second World War, circa 1940, excellent opt optics, could have originally been painted grey, modern stand, but uh, superb binoculars. A couple of diving helmets, should that be your thing? Submarine star globe under there, um, from a German Second World War submarine. A bit of wood from the first British submarine of 1902, HMS Holland 1. Uh, over here we have uh, the builder's plate, that's what the engines got when they were finished, when the, the vessel was finished, but that's from a submarine. Um, and the submarine was sunk, we think the plate was not fitted because it was about twice the size of what it should be. This curious thing, looks like a dumbbell, is actually bar shot, um, circa 1800. That was trawled up in English Channel um, and uh, you stuffed it down a gun and fired it at foreign, uh, your enemy's rigging and, uh, and to try to, to take it all down. These huge searchlights are from a German warship. They came out of um, uh, Wilhelmshaven um, and uh, believe it or not, were made by the British. The company is still in business, but they were circa 1935 and uh, recovered just after the war and put into a garden. That curious object is a rum pump um, used to bring up rum for the Royal Navy rum ration, which ended in 1970. The little bridge bell there from the Discovery 2, that's the ship that replaced the Discovery, the research ship. This bell there is from the um, a Russian nuclear submarine, K524, launched in 1977, first of the Victor class, and that was the submarine, it was a stealth submarine. Uh, they, the Russians had nicked all the technology from Russians, from the Norwegians and Americans, and uh, used a, a stealth technology. This is the submarine class that inspired the film The Hunt for Red October. Um, that's the uh, that's the submarine bell. And there you go. Makes a nice noise there. Sailor's sea service chest. When you're on, on, there are nice original sailor's Beckett handles there, and you'll see that the uh, there you are, it's dated for 1913 in the lid there. British sailing ship. There it is. Um, and it's got a waxed tar top. So sort of used it. They use it for sitting on bench work and so on. Weird thing here is a dental conformicator. We think it's for making false teeth. I'm not sure, it's German. <laughs> um, it's a very nicely made Japanese tanker model, actually. The Caltex Plymouth. 
um, but very all that's gold plated detailing. Um, that's a piece of sailor's pan bone. It's a, sorry, sailor's but sailor work. It's it's, it's whales from a whale's jaw. It's a baleen. There you are, pan bone. That's a powder horn from the American War of Independence. Weird things down here. Uh, nice telescope. Uh, but these are all these are called bosun starters, and they're for basically walloping your crew or maintaining discipline. There's a cat and nine tails as well uh, for flogging, um, and a, a, a whalebone truncheon. Um, you can see it's made out of a bit of vertebrae. There you are. Uh, but it'd be a brutally hard thing to use. And this thing is called a sailor's friend. It's a piece of grape shot encased in rope work, and you rolled up in your pocket. And if you got into trouble ashore you had some sort of protection and you've whirled it around and created our mayhem. Uh, so here we have a life ring and life vest from the Flying Enterprise, uh, which is a ship that capsized in heavy weather in 1950. Uh, the captain, shown in the middle here, Captain Carlson, tried very hard to save his ship. He's the last man aboard, but unfortunately the cargo shifted again and he literally walked off the funnel onto a waiting tugboat. Uh, he got a ticket tape parade in New York. This is a helm from HMS Stork. She was a sub chaser in World War II. She, she, she um, was captained by a fellow called Johnny Walker. All the actions she served in around the side here on the rim. Um, she was at Norm